How do I attack that problem? How do we solve that problem? Can I use the Internet of Things to solve a problem? Can I use technology? And being at conferences and talking to experienced people really helps me. This is the Facility Management Innovator Podcast, where we talk with FM industry leaders about workplace trends, challenges, and the future of the built environment. This show is brought to you by KRL Connections, providing information, consulting, and marketing expertise to help organizations deliver workplace innovation to the facility management community. Hey there, how's it going, my fellow FM innovators? This is Mike Petreski, and I am super excited to welcome you to Episode 5 of the Facility Management Innovator Podcast. This show is coming at you the first week of October, and many of you might be on the way or already in San Diego for the Big IFMA conference this week. And if you are, I hope you have listened to our special episode about IFMA's World Workplace. And if not, please stop the playback right now and go over to episode four of the podcast. Get yourself ready for World Workplace. And then don't forget to connect with Myra and me while in San Diego this week. Then once you are all caught up and ready to rock and roll, please do come back and pick things up here with episode five. Now, I hope you are enjoying our little podcast so far. We are certainly trying our best to keep things interesting. And to that end, we have a bit of a different twist today. Our first few interviews, you may have noticed, were FM innovators who engage the facility management community from their industry partner roles, bringing solutions to facility managers. But now we get our first chance to hear from the facility management practitioner point of view with our guest today, the director of facilities at Northern Virginia Community College, Steve Patterson. So are you ready to hear some candid insights from the property owner perspective? Steve's going to share his views about facility management and how he is leveraging relationships with both FM colleagues and with industry partners to meet the daily challenges he faces. But before we roll the tape, is that even a thing anymore? Rolling tape? I really doubt it. Before we get started, I do want to mention something very exciting that I discovered about Steve that did not make it into this recorded interview. I am shocked. I'm dismayed. How did we not talk about this at the time? But I found this out when I first met Steve about a year ago. In fact, it was exactly a year ago at World Workplace 2015 in Denver. We spent some quality time hanging out there, as Myra and I said people often do, and we got to know each other. And it was back then that I first discovered that Steve has his MBA from Virginia Tech. That's right. Go Hokies. Can we play uh, Tech Triumph or a little Hokey Hokey High? No? Can't get the licensing for that? No? All right. Moving on. But that was really awesome news to me because many of you who already know me are well aware I am a passionate Hokie. My wife and I met in Blacksburg. My two daughters are from Virginia Tech. The One's a student there. One graduated. So proud of both of them. But yeah, I am sure we will talk about my love for the Hokies now that football season is underway. And you may have heard me mention back a few episodes ago my radio dream back in college. You know, I was a student at Virginia Tech by day, but at night... I was actually on the radio. That's right. For a time, I was known as the Red Rocker. That's right. Let that let that sink in. So a lot of good times, a lot of good memories from my time in Blacksburg. I'm sure I'll share some more stories down the road about that. But why did we get off track? Oh, Steve got his MBA from tech. So listen, Steve's a great guy. I did later find out, though, that Steve's wife and son are from the University of Virginia. They are Wahoos. And his daughter is a graduate of James Madison University. Both fine institutions here in the beautiful Commonwealth of Virginia, mind you. But they are two of our biggest in-state rivals. And Steve and I do exchange some friendly banter back and forth about this. Seriously, though, it's all been good fun. And it's been great getting to know Steve over this past year. Now serving with him side by side on the board at the Capitol Chapter of IFMA. And now it's your chance to get to know him a little bit, too. So here we go. Let's roll the tape. Welcome, Steve Patterson. Thanks, Mike. Glad to be here. Steve is the Director of Facilities at Northern Virginia Community College. He has 30 years of experience in all phases of building improvement and energy services in the public and private sector. His expertise includes project management, energy engineering, capital project planning, contract negotiation, and the list goes on and on. Man, what don't you do? (laughs) Thanks. We uh, know there's a lot more about Steve than just all these great credentials and experiences. So please tell us a little bit more about you personally. Who is Steve Patterson beyond being an FM professional extraordinaire? Well, that, that covers a lot of the ground. I like to golf and uh, our daughter's out of college, graduated, and our son's still in college. So we'll go visit him quite a bit. 
And uh, my wife has been working at Verizon for about the same 30-year period as myself here. So talk to me more about um, what you consider to be your expertise. I know I rattled off a lot of different areas of experience you have, but what if I put you on the spot and said, what are you most expert about? What would you say? Really just spend a lot of time with construction management, project managing myself, and then having teams of project managers. Secondly, energy efficiency, years developing energy projects, building energy projects, energy engineering, things along those lines. Now I'm learning more and more about facilities management from the owner's perspective. You know, going from a utility background to a contractor background, last several years I've always thought about getting on the owner's side and really been excited to be here at Northern Virginia Community College the past year and a half being on the owner's side of the ledger. Uh, Nova is the largest public educational institution in Virginia and the second largest community college in the United States, comprised of more than 75,000 students, 2,600 faculty and staff members. To manage a facility and institution of this size, you must wear a lot of hats each day. I mean, what parts of your job are you most passionate about? You know, the, the thrilling part of being in an owner organization is it's your sandbox. You know, it's your buildings, your campuses. We, we happen to have about 50 buildings across the six campuses in Northern Virginia. We're in three different counties plus the city of Alexandria. And every day is a, a new challenge. That's what I liked about project management was every day was different. In facility management, every day is different. And I just love the aspects of it might be an engineering issue. It might be a financial issue, a budget issue. We're working with human beings. We have internal customers and pleasing internal customers can be harder than pleasing external customers. So it's a absolutely fascinating variety pack from that perspective. So we talked a little bit about IFMA and our, our role here locally, but talk more about that association and other professional organizations you've been a part of during your career and how that has helped you advance in your career. I've always had a strong belief that the two main things we have going for us is our resume and our, our network, our human network. And I spent 20 years with Association of Energy Engineers, was on the board of the local chapter here in D.C., won some national awards with our local chapter very proud of that. But the the upshot of it, one of the upshots or one of the great things about it was you're building those professional relationships, you're building your network, you're learning, you're continuing to develop yourself professionally as you go. And uh, IFMA, I found to be a great home now that I've switched over to the owner side here a year and a half ago. And the, the, the growth always continues, the networking, the kinds of relationships I've been able to cultivate since I've joined IFMA have been a bit different from when I was with Association of Energy Engineers both fantastic organizations and IFMA is very congruent with what my job responsibilities are now, which include a lot of non-engineering types of things. And recently I I called the uh, director of facilities for the San Diego Unified School District, a person who I've never met in person who lives thousands of miles away from me here in Virginia. And we were talking about turf fields and lots of issues and research studies. There was an ESPN report talking about, are they safe and that sort of thing. And, um, I got all kinds of information. And then eight weeks after that phone call, I'm sitting in the office of our president talking about turf soccer fields. And uh, I had an awful lot of information that I was able to provide in a a pretty short briefing. And it was really through the leveraging the network. Now, I had to know that that issue was going to come up later, but it worked out perfectly where I was able to leverage the person's knowledge to help me look smarter and be better at my job. That's really what we see at IFMA. I mean, we see so many opportunities to collaborate, um, not just among professional members, but with the industry partners who have all this knowledge, the latest technologies, the latest resources. And I'm always saying to them, we need to be a person of value, deliver this information to our FM professionals. So when they have that opportunity to present to the C-suite or to uh, engage in in some type of a uh, innovative solution on their on whether it's on campus or, or in a in the private sector and there's a problem that needs to be solved then you need to be uh, top of mind to say hey I, I've heard about that I know how to get that done let me let me tap into my industry partners and and help uh, deliver that solution to my organization right that's right Mike time is the most precious thing it's the scarcest resource my own time and my team's time and it's just impossible for, for me to entertain all of the vendors contractors and consultants that might like to come over and visit with me but if I can become aware of them at a an association event or at a IFMA event or at an IFMA conference then when I do have that challenge or that problem then it'll be uh, on my mind you said top of mind that I can reach out and connect with them then because you know when the problem hits my desk then we are look, going to look for a solution Solution, and that's where we're, we're hunting for how do we get there procurement wise and how do we get there from a technical solution provider point of view. 
So how do you personally like to investigate or research uh, what's going on in the industry? I mean, are you one to listen to podcasts, for example, or do you uh, read publications, professional journals, or just online web search? If you're looking for some information, how do you find it and how do you kind of determine, hey, that company or that person really knows what they're talking about? I tend to put most of my energy into industry trends, best practices, my network of peers. I'll I'll call at all weird times of the day and night. They'll call me with problems, but while I'm responding to their question, they're responding to my question of the moment. We'll also quickly jump to, hey, what's what's going on? What's the next big thing that's going to help us? What's the next big thing that's going to create a lot of problems? One example is the legislation around stormwater and MS4. That came about a couple of years ago, and that was a huge change. It resulted in people like me having to hire environmental people, having to hire consultants so we could start doing all the compliance uh, requirements to do it properly. And it may not have been an an area of expertise pre-existingly with directors of facilities. That would vary. But uh, for me, it's staying plugged into the industry, finding out what my peers are doing and talking about, and then at conferences, I'll bring a huge list of questions and a suitcase full of problems with me, and I'll try to draw a bead on the solutions from talking to people that I see at the conference, buttonholing speakers. I'm trying to extract a lot of value when I spend the state's money to go to a conference, and uh, and I've been that way before I came to the state. And then that helps me in my mind as I'm thinking about problems. How do I attack that problem? How do we solve that problem? Can I use the Internet of Things to solve a problem? Can I use technology? How to approach that problem? And, and being at conferences and talking to experienced people really helps me develop that strategy. And then after that, you know, it's deploying the, the details to sort it out. That's great stuff. And you also, I know, have ambition to potentially uh, speak at some of these conferences, right? I mean, it's a tough gig to get, but when you can get it, I mean, you have a lot of knowledge, experience to share. What would you like to talk about if you did have that opportunity? I think there's, there, you know, depending on what the theme of the conference might be, but uh, I'm interested in developing and deploying a training program for our own department. And I've talked to a lot of people about how to organize uh, such an effort. It's a huge effort and it cuts across different areas. But I know that some of my peers use community colleges to obtain training for themselves. So I think we also have the opportunity to be the source of training, not just the um, purchaser of training from an outside entity. I think trends in facilities management and really the problems that I'm trying to solve. And and part of it is to have some successes that we can then talk about. I don't really want to speak about something that I want to solve, that I can't explain to my constituents that I've solved and I have a success to share. So a little bit of is waiting for the good story that we can then share with others. Let's talk a little bit about the industry. And I know uh, you've got a a lot of different background experience, but uh, where do you think FM has been over the last five to 10 years, what's what's changed the most? And then I'm going to ask you, what do you think the future of facility management looks like? I think if you go to any major conference about facilities management or facilities maintenance, the issue that's confronting everybody is an aging workforce, technology's changing, there's a lot of budget pressure, there's also loss of institutional knowledge as folks retire. So I think, I think everyone is aware of those factors, and none of those are particularly easy problems to solve. And uh, I think that's where the industry's been, just by the nature of the beast. And where are we going? In the future, I think it's going to continue to be, if we have an aging workforce and technology is changing and the demands for maintenance is getting is increasing over time, it's going to push us towards trying to figure out a great way to get training programs for our staffs. Secondly, it's going to push us more and more towards technology. We know the Internet of Things isn't going away. We know that we have control systems. We know that we have a lot of disparate systems that are just dying to share their information with us as facility managers. And that gets to how do we integrate our systems? How can we leverage one of the mega trends of convergence where we're going to try to bring all that data together? We aspire to integrated work management systems. It's expensive. It's complicated. We have to make sure that it doesn't choke us out trying to implement it. We have to make sure that it doesn't solve two problems while creating five other problems simultaneously. So it's not easy. It's not easy at all. It's a big challenge. And um, I think the facility manager of tomorrow is going to understand the engineering and the operations and the financial and the procurement. We can never forget about procurement, particularly for those of us in the public sector, to bring that together. It's going to require vision. We're going to need a lot of help from industry. We need help. I tell folks every day when I meet with contractors and consultants that we need a lot of help. I have the same challenges that the industry has, which is how can we get together? We, we have to follow all the requirements. We know that much, but we need a lot of help and we need smart people to help us 
get to where we're trying to get to? And how do we do all this within our budgets that we, you know, we're all confronted with a budget. So it has to be within our budget. And one of the mantras I say in the office is we just want to do things to help ourselves. We need a lot of help and we want to be better, faster and smarter. And how can we leverage technology and tools to, to do that? Well, that's excellent. The industry partners out there, not the old school vendors that are trying to knock on your door and throw brochures at you, but the true partners who are willing to get their hands dirty with you and invest their time and their um, bring their expertise to the table and really help be a partner in solving these problems you mentioned are the ones that are really going to thrive in the future. And that's what we're trying to do here uh, through this podcast and, and through the work I do at, a- at KRL Connections is really to equip our industry partners to better serve facility professionals like yourself. So I appreciate uh, you commenting on that. I think the name of the game for facility managers and practitioners is really being resourceful. You know, the smarter we are really means the more resourceful we are. And we know this from project management is thinking in terms of options, being resourceful. And one of the sayings that I think really applies well is not if, just how. You know, we're not really thinking in terms of, are we going to fail? Are we going to succeed? It's just, how are we going to succeed? And and I think that's really critical. Well, thank you, Steve. Our time's up. I appreciate you spending this time with me. Uh, you can make your tea time in a, in a little while here. <laughs> but it's always great to hear uh, FM Professional's perspective on the industry, the value of strong partnerships, and the opportunities for collaboration through IFMA and other professional organizations. I really do appreciate that. Thank you, Mike. Alrighty, there you have it. Good times and go Hokies with Steve Patterson. So much quality content from Steve. I hope you got a lot out of it. So please, if you have any thoughts about something Steve shared, or if you've just got some comments about these first handful of podcast episodes, why not let us know? In fact, the best way to support the show is to head over to iTunes, give us a rating. There's some stars there on the iTunes homepage for the podcast. Just click those stars. It'll say thanks. Consider that us saying thank you for the support. And if you really want to help, please write a review, just a brief one, and tell us how we're doing. If you are kind enough to do that, I will happily give you a personal thank you and a shout out on a future episode. How's that for an offer you can't refuse? More movie quotes. Thank you so much to those of you who have already emailed me about the podcast in these first couple weeks. I can't begin to tell you how encouraging it is to hear that you are listening and enjoying some of what we are putting out there and we'll continue to do it and I can't wait to talk to you again soon and until then of course be an FM innovator peace out you've been listening to the facility management innovator podcast we hope you found this discussion beneficial as we work together to elevate the FM community by building partnerships that lead to innovative workplace solutions For more information about facility management collaboration and marketing resources, visit krelconnections.com.